Oh my goodness. Hey, what's going on, Scope Ikes? What's going on, Scope Ikes? How y'all doing this evening? God blessings. God blessings. Or should I say God evening to everybody? <laughs> bless you. Hello, 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 Miss Sunshine. God bless you guys. What's going on, Connecticut? I got my house fires worship going on in the background. I don't know if y'all, I want to put y'all up on some new worship for those of you that love to worship. Uh, there's a, a very great group called House Fires. Uh, House Fires 1 and 2. If you guys have not got their CDs, you guys really need to go get it and download it. Uh, so that's what I'm playing actually in the background. Blessings, what's going on? Uh, Florida, uh, give me a shout out where you guys are coming in from. Good evening from Birmingham, UK. God bless you. What's going on, Prophet Isaac? Tyler, Texas, what's up? What's up? What's up? Good evening. Orlando, Virgin Islands, what's going on? Albany, Georgia, what's up? What's up? What's up? All right, y'all hear my music in the background because I'm a worshiper first. Before I'm a prophet, before I'm a pastor, before I'm a teacher, I am a bona fide worshiper. I love to worship. Amen, amen. Hello, God bless you, woman of God. Yes, yes, yes. All right, guys, you can go ahead and invite some others into this time of sharing. What's up, Chi-Town, Chicago, Albany, Georgia, Washington State, Mississippi? What's going on, Orlando, Durham, North Carolina, New Orleans, Detroit, Virginia? What's up, Houston, Memphis, uh, North Carolina, Atlanta? What's going on, Houston? I was just there in Houston the other day. God bless you, Miss Sunshine, Albany, Georgia, Miami, Tallahassee, Maryland. All right. God bless you. Zebulon, North Carolina, Nashville, Tennessee, Kansas City, Missouri. What's going on? We have some spiritual parents there in Kansas City, Missouri, Charity Church. And um, we'll be with them real soon for their uh, grand opening services. Detroit, what's going on? What's going on? Dallas, Dallas. I love Dallas. I love Dallas. What's going on, everybody? Uh, Las Vegas. Praise God. Uh, Arkansas, Chicago, San Diego. What's going on? Let's keep, let's keep coming in the room, guys. We'll give it another couple of moments here before we go ahead and kick it off here. Go ahead and invite some others. It's going to be a great, great time of sharing. Uh, really praying about uh, this uh, school of prophets here. And um, we're going to see how the Lord works this thing out. Chesterfield, Virginia, God bless you. Never, never land. <laughs> What's up, Prophet Isaac? Hello from Chicago. What's going on, Chicago, Chicago? All right, what's going on? Any other check-ins? What's up? Well, God bless you, everybody. Uh, God evening. Uh, California. Hey, man, what's going on, Cali? What's going on, Cali? In my LL Cool J voice, going back to Cali. Cali, Cali, Cali. What's going on, everybody? Thank y'all so much for sharing. Uh, that blesses and encourages my heart. Thank you so much for doing that. Blessings to you all. Blessings to you, Powerhouse. Hey, what's going on, Prophetess? How you doing? Hopefully you guys can hear me and see me okay. If you can hear me and see me okay and we're not freezing, go ahead and give me some thumbs up. Do you also blow the shofar? Yes, we do. Chicago, LOL. <laughs> You're funny, Prophet Isaac. <laughs> All right, Charlotte in the house. What's going on, Charlotte? Cali, 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 California. Jay from Cleveland, Hensdale. Praise the Lord. All right, Prophetess Tracy. You're a South, you're a, you, you're a suburbanite. You're not a, a, a Northwesternite. <laughs> Memphis, Colorado. What's going on, Colorado? Man, you guys are awesome. You guys are awesome, 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 awesome. Well, I'm excited, guys, this evening to be with you guys. Uh, you guys can keep inviting others to come into this time of sharing. And, uh, Oh, thank you guys so much. You guys are awesome. 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 Unfreeze in Jesus' name. Amen. I, I agree right now. All right. I'm getting a lot of thumbs up. Okay. I see a lot of thumbs up. That must mean we be good to go right now. All right. Okay. Let me turn this music down some if I get raptured up in the Holy Ghost right here. Uh, it don't take much at all for me to get caught up in worship right here. So, uh... <laughs> But I uh, just want to take this opportunity to thank all of those of you that came on. God bless you, Seattle. What's going on, Seattle? Adam Smith, God bless you. Bless you. God bless you. Hello, 
uh, Chick Hair Houston. God bless you. I'm back. Screen froze. All right, Miss Lola Sunshine. Freeport, Bahamas. All right. We have uh, a Bahamian family um, in our ministry, too, from the Bahamas. Praise God. Welcome, welcome, bah Bahamas. But welcome, California. Oh, y'all are awesome. Just keep on coming in. Keep sharing. Keep inviting. And as uh, soon as we get this count up a little higher, guys, we're going to jump right into the teaching. Glory to God. Uh, we want to hit at least 100, so let's keep on inviting others so we can jump right on in here and get rolling here. And you guys keep the hearts. You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. Greetings from Azerbaijan. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, at Renat. God bless you. Wherever that is from, I do not know, but thank you so much. <laughs> God bless you. You got to hit me up on to that music. Okay, prophetess, I got you. I got you. It's House Fires. That's House Fires, uh, Volume 1 and 2. Uh, I listen to House Fires quite often. Uh, that's my guy, uh, uh, Brother Jarrett. I love those guys from Georgia. They're out of Georgia. Just an awesome, awesome worship ministry there. Can you sing to us? Oh, come on now. What y'all talking about now? Now, I'm not coming on here to sing now. <laughs> Somebody say already worshiping. I love that. Nassau Bahamas, God bless you. How are you? That's awesome. The freezing is from personal connection, not yours. All right. Thank you guys so much. Well, listen, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started here. I uh, hope you guys got your notepads and pens. Uh, we're going to try not to make this as lengthy as it was on the last time because you guys just really started pulling and uh, the gift really got stirred and you guys really started to ask a lot of questions. Minister, uh, Per year. Love you. God bless you. Back at you. Love you. Peace and blessings back to you. Shalom. Thank you. Well, listen here, guys. Uh, we have been talking about uh, prophetic voices, uh, prophetic voices, how important it is for us to have a prophetic voice. God bless you. House fires. Got it. There you go. Uh, we've been talking about prophetic voices. You know, uh, it is so amazing to me that the world is so full of various types and forms of voices. God bless you from El Paso. The world is full of different kinds of voices. And so as people of God that are spiritual or people that are born of the spirit, understand that uh, the Bible declares in Romans, I believe it's chapter eight. It says those that are led by the spirit are the sons of God. Well, in this season that we're in, saints of God, it would behoove us all to have a prophetic voice in our lives. What am I saying? Uh, as I stated this call or this uh, lesson on tonight, uh, we talked about it and we didn't really get into it on the other day on Saturday about uh, prophets. P-R-O-F-I-T-S, then prophets, P-R-O-P-H-E-T-S. There is a vast difference between the two. That is why it's so important that when it comes to prophetic voices, that the Bible declares in Revelation 3.22, he that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. You have a word on Jezebel. I need you to go over that again. Amen. Praise God. If the time permits, we'll try. Just remind me. If not on this scope, we'll get it on another scope. Uh, thank you so much. Welcome, welcome. But uh, the world is so full of different voices. But the reality is, is that when it comes down to uh, prophetic voices, uh, the, the Bible talks about he that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Now, as believers, and let's just recap here and review and lay some foundation here. Uh, Revelations 3.22, we want to give some words just so that we can lay some foundation here because I am a word man. I believe in the word of God. I don't believe that anybody out there prophesying the word of the Lord should not be standing on the word of God. Amen. So uh, a true prophet has balance in his or her life. Whereas they not only have their ear to the voice of God, but everyone out there listening to me, I need you to catch this. A true prophet, two things. They have their ear to the mouth of God because understand this, that God is always speaking. We are just not always listening. I'll say that again. 
As people of God, we have to understand that God is always speaking. We are just not always listening. Come on, y'all. Uh, so we established this point that when it comes to prophetic voices, two things about true prophets is that a true prophet hears the voice of God. And then what balance that prophet out is that he or she stands on the word of God. The Bible says, having done all, stand on the word of God. So we look at this uh, fivefold ministry, as we know right now in our culture, there are so many different types of voices that are out there in the world today, so many uh, different types of diversities and things and what have you. But when we're looking at the fivefold ministry, I just want to interject here how important it is for us to get to the point where it comes to a prophetic voice. When it comes to prophetic voices, believers, it is imperative that we are hearing. Now, for those of you that missed the lesson on the last time, we gave you several points. And uh, I want to give those to you guys again here. Uh, excuse me. We had several points here that we gave you guys on the other day. And I really want you guys to uh, grab a hold to this. And I want you guys to really uh, meditate on this because the Bible says, uh, the Lord never promised that he would give you success. The reality is, is that you have success or you will have success as you begin to meditate on the word of God or the things of God. So we talked about how can a person as a prophet or how can I tap into that prophetic voice? Well, we gave you a couple of points here and let's review them real quickly here. Number one, we said humility, humility. A prophet that walks around arrogant, thinking he or she knows everything, is not a prophet. They are a P-R-O-F-I-T. They are profiting for the benefit of themselves. Praise God. But when you have the heart of God or the heart or, or, or a heart full of compassion, praise God, as the prophet Jeremiah, who had a heart for the things of God, that he began to weep on behalf of the people of God. So number one, we said was humility. Number two, we said was submission. A prophet, a true prophet will be submitted to a covering. I'll say that again. A true prophet will be submitted to a covering. If you call yourself a prophet, you are not a P-R-O-P-H-E-T if you are not accountable to an apostolic office or structure or order or there is establishment in your life. The Bible says that Jesus or God, he is the author of not confusion, but he's the author and finisher of our faith. So uh, we said number one class tonight was humility. Number two was submission. Number three was sensitivity. It is so important that we develop sensitivity. And let me just give you a side note here, a sidebar or a cliff note here. Uh, one of the things that will strengthen your hearing when it comes to a prophetic voice, a true prophet in your life, one of the things that will uh, uh, strengthen your sensitivity is this, is worship. Worship, spending time in the presence of God. You know, I wrote this in my book and I share this everywhere I go. And even with our church quite often is that a church that has this much worship is a church that will have this much revelation. But a church that has this much worship is will be a church that flows strong in revelation. So what am I saying? Your worship or your revelation will be equivalent to the level of your worship. Your revelation will be equivalent to the level of your worship. Praise God. So when we're talking about Number one, we said class humility. Number two, uh, uh, submission. Number three, sensitivity. Number four, a worship lifestyle. Number five, prayer. And we gave you guys an acronym for prayer, which we don't have time to really get into that tonight. Uh, we'll pick up on it a little bit later because I want to get right to where we need to go. And then uh, the next point is fast. Fast. How many of you know that is so important for us as believers that we fast. 
You know, that the Bible declares that there are just some things that will not get out of your life, some strongholds that will not be broken, except that of by fasting and praying. Now, me, myself, personally, I'm not, you know, judging anybody else. But for me personally, when I spend time in prayer or when I have a, a ministry engagement or even when I'm preaching at my own church, uh, whether uh, the South or North location, I always govern myself or bring my body under subjection and fast. You know, there are so many things that happen when we begin to fast. And I'm telling you, uh, I found out even like in my own life that as I began to fast on the regular basis, as I began to fast before I, I minister, as I began to fast before I have to make a great decision about something in my life, God just begins to really download some things to me, praise God. So uh, we said humility, submission, sensitivity, a worship lifestyle, and prayer. Everybody needs to know how important it is to have prayer, 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 prayer. I can't emphasize how important it is for us to have prayer. But when it comes to hearing the voice of God, can I just tell you that when it comes to fasting, it is so important that we have a regular lifestyle as a prophet. A prophet is one that not only has his ear to the uh, mouth of God and has his feet standing on the word of God, but they are those that are often people that are fasting. Fasting, because what does fasting do? Uh, the word fast in the Hebrew is tasum, which is T-S-U-M, which literally means hand over mouth, which is to allow, or excuse me, not allow food to go into your mouth so that you can bring your body, your flesh. The Bible declares in our flesh dwells no good thing. So as prophets, we have to learn how to fast. We have to learn how to bring this flesh under subjection. Because watch this. When I bring this flesh under subjection, when I prophesy to you, I don't prophesy to you from a place of hurt. I don't prophesy to you from a place of judgment. I don't prophesy to you from a place of being cantankerous or nasty or vindictive. Are you hearing me this evening? I don't prophesy to you from that negative place, but I prophesy to you from a place of power, from a place of authority, from a place of strength, from the place where the anointing is stirring on the inside. I prophesy to you from a place of love. Praise God. I'm getting stirred up right here. Let me slow down tonight. <laughs> Glory to God. Blessings to you all. But uh, when it comes down to fasting, we noticed that there were several people. Thank you guys so much for sharing. I encourage you to go ahead and share with some others. Uh, 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 but let's look at Daniel. Uh, Daniel was one that fasted, one that prayed. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 10 that he prayed uh, for 21 days. And of course, as we often do in life, sometimes we can almost have a faith failure uh, uh, because we are fasting and praying and that thing is not moving and turning over fast enough. But then all of a sudden, the word of the Lord comes to him and tell him, you know what? Hold up, Daniel. Don't you dare give up because from the very first day that you set your heart to pray, I heard you and have now come for your words. What am I saying? I'm saying to you tonight that fasting has the ability to cause a uh, uh, your sensitivity to go to a whole nother level, not only worship, but cause you to go to a whole nother level when it comes to a prophetic voice, when it comes to hearing the voice of God, as you open up your spirit, man, and you begin to fast, what begins to happen is that your spirit man becomes now sensitized to the voice of God. Oftentimes, one of the setbacks that many believers have when it comes to hearing an apostolic or a prophetic voice is that you don't fast. You don't crucify the flesh. You do not deny the flesh. Oh God, let me slow down here tonight. <laughs> I'm not preaching that y'all. Please forgive me, but I'm just stirred up in the Holy Ghost because I'm tired of the devil uh, uh, attacking and moving in the lives of believers and causing people to be stunted in their growth, be stunted in their prosperity, be stunted and, and progressing in the things of God. I'm just declaring right now that as uh, 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 you begin to fast, you know, uh, there's a pastor by the name of Jensen Franklin uh, out of uh, uh, Georgia who wrote a book on fast. 
You know, Kingsley Fletcher uh, out of uh, Nigeria, he did a book on fasting. I'm telling you, uh, the late Dr. Miles Monroe did a book on prayer and fasting. I'm telling you, saints of God, there's so much good information that is out there because, see, another reason why people are not hearing the prophetic voices and they tend to gravitate toward the prophet, the P-R-O-F-I-T, instead of the P-R-O-P-H-E-T, is because they don't spend time hearing uh, uh, hearing the series or hearing the messages of faith being taught on fasting. The Bible declares it like this in Romans 10, 17. It says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Well, if you say, pastor, prophet, I don't know how to fast. I don't have faith to fast. Well, faith comes by hearing. I was one, come on, you know, uh, 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 I didn't care too much for fasting. And that's just real talk right now. But I began to discover that if I was going to become proficient in the prophetic side of God and walking in the office of a prophet, I had to do something that I've never done before to get something that I've never had before. So we're talking tonight about prophetic voices. We're talking tonight about prophetic voices. You know, I often love to give acronyms because for me, uh, acronyms are such a blessing uh, you know, we gave you an acronym for prayer. Uh, 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 we gave you an acronym uh, 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 for faith. Uh, faith uh, is full assurance in the heart. Uh, Apostle Eckhart has one that will be coming out in January. Amen. I know. Thank you so much. God bless you. Uh, 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 we did an acronym for uh, prayer. We, has an we have an acronym for faith, full assurance in the heart. Real simple, real simple. Don't want to profit, it's about money. All right now, uh, but let me give you this acronym for FAST to help you remember it. FAST, F stands for it fortifies you because we're talking about prophetic voices. We're talking about being able to hear prophetically what the Spirit of God is saying to the church because understand right now, there is a shifting, there is a quake, a, 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 a awakening that is stirring up in the in the body of Christ in terms of the authentic prophetic voice of the prophets. Amen. So the letter F represents fast. The letter F represents fast. The letter F represents fast. Fast, it fortifies you. Fasting, it fortifies you. How many of you know uh, uh, when you want to fortify something, you, 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 you have a wall or a structure or something that's there to prevent what's on the outside from coming in? Well, fasting will literally stop what is on the outside from coming in. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So fast or the letter F represents it fortifies you. The letter A represents it accelerates the hand of God. How many of you out there will love to see things accelerated in your life? Come on. You feel the unction to prophesy. You feel a stirring to prophesy in your spirit. You may be already functioning in the office of a prophet and your church does not even permit a prophetic flow. Well, I'm saying to you right now, the letter A is that when you fast and pray, the letter A represents it accelerates the hand of God. God will either move his hand on your set man or woman of God, or God will either move his hand on you and move you out of that ministry. Hear me tonight, saints of God. I know this might be kind of strong, but this is what the people of God need. It's time for us to grow up. It's time for us to leave the milk. Some of us have been saved for years, praise God, bless God, and still drinking milk out of milk cartons. Come on, y'all. Well, it, the time has come, saints of God, for us to take the meat. Come on. The time has come for us to take the meat. Paul said, when I was a child, I thought as a child, but now I am a man and now I got to shake the things off. I got to put my feet flat on the ground and I got to do what God has commissioned and called me to do. If that means I got to prophesy to myself, if that means I got to prophesy to my family, if that means I got to prophesy to my pet, <laughs> if I got to prophesy to the fish in the fish tank, praise God, I'm going to prophesy because the Bible says you prophesy according to the proportion of your faith. The more you prophesy, the more you stir up your faith. The more you prophesy, obviously you may hit and then you may miss, but the more you prophesy, you begin to perfect that gift. The more you prophesy, that thing gets stirred up in you. 
So here we go, uh, class tonight. We're talking about prophetic voices, talking about prophet, and then we're talking about prophets. All right. So the letter F represents fasting because it fortifies you. I hope y'all taking good notes tonight. Uh, you know, this periscope will only be up for a short time. And then um, the letter F represents it fortifies you. Uh, 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 A represents accelerates the hand of God. And then on your behalf. And then S is what I love. I love the letter S. Now you're going to love this part. The letter S means it superimposes over anything and everything. Oh my God. <laughs> Principalities and powers. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. How many of you know that there are certain areas of your life where there are principalities and powers that are trying to rule and govern your life? And you know that because there are resistance in certain areas, whether it's financially, whether it's moving ahead in the things of God, whether it's in your marriage, whether it's in your ministry. You know that there are principalities. You know that the Prince of Persia, that principality, that dark principality, that power, that, uh, uh, that principality is trying to prevent you from doing what God has called you to do. So the letter S represents, watch this. The letter S represents, it superimposes over anything and everything, principalities and power. And lastly, the letter T uh, represents testimonies. Oh my God, testimonies. Are y'all ready for some supernatural testimonies? Anybody ready for some supernatural testimonies? Come on, give me some high fives or give me some hand claps or some thumbs up if you're ready for some supernatural testimonies. Well, there's an anointing that is stirring right now. I prophesy right now that an anointing is stirring up in you right now with the mighty name of Jesus. That supernatural testimonies are about to emerge out of your life out of your finances, out of your family, out of your ministries. I'm prophesying right now an avalanche of miracles, an avalanche of increase, an avalanche of favor, an avalanche. Oh my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. An avalanche. I prophesy an avalanche right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Listen, if you guys are out there and this thing is encouraging you, I want you to just bless somebody else and just invite them into this time of sharing. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you guys. Thank you so much. The greater the anointing, the greater the attack. All right. Now, that is so true. So uh, we said all of this to say when we're talking about prophetic voices, how important it is for us to be uh, uh, in that place where we are fasting, okay? So we said humility class, submission, sensitivity, worship lifestyle, prayer, fast. And then my next point is confession. Oh my God, confession. Romans chapter 10 talks about uh, with the heart man believe and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The word salvation in the Greek or the Hebrew is soterio, which means deliverance, which means increase, which means breakthrough. Are you hearing me? Which means prosperity. Glory be to God. See, the reality is, is what has stifled many believers is that we got saved and then we just thought that that was it. But can I tell you that when you get saved, that is not the end. That is only just the beginning. <laughs> Glory be to God. That is not the end, beloved. That is not the end. That is just the beginning. Praise God. That is just the beginning of you moving into your prophetic office. That is just the beginning to you moving and operating and functioning in that ministry gift. Whether it's word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits, interpretation of tongues, the gift of tongues, the gift of faith, signs, wonders, miracles, signs and wonders and miracles. Whether whatever that administration be, the Bible talks about there are diverse kinds of administrations. But guess what? The reality is, is that they all are of the same spirit. Now, to understand the spirit of God, understand that the spirit of God, he is a prophetic spirit. Not it is a prophetic spirit. The Holy Spirit is not an it. He is a prophetic spirit. So if the Lord or the spirit of God is a prophetic spirit, then guess what, beloved? 
It is within all of us the ability to prophesy. So if you desire to prophesy, I stir you up right now in the name of Jesus. As Paul laid hands upon Timothy, I lay my hands up in the air right now. As I am laying my hands on you in the spirit right now, that the gift of prophetic or the gift of the prophet or the gift of the prophetic, excuse me, will begin to operate, function and flow in you and that you will begin to step out with boldness and faith and assurance and assurity and decisive and prophesy like you've never prophesied before. Glory be to God. Oh my God. I hope y'all being blessed tonight by this tonight because I'm just stirred up in the Holy Ghost tonight. I want to give the devil a black eye in the Holy Ghost. At Decatur 44, there is still a way to fast. Sacrifice something. God will honor your sacrifice. Amen. Praise God to bear this. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. All right, guys. So prophetic voices, as I stated, there's so many things that are in the world, saints of God. I just decree and declare that this is the season that we're going to see an emergence of the Samuels and the Issachars. You know, the Lord brought a startling revelation out on the last scope. We talked about Issachar being the tribe that understood the time and the seasons and knew what to do on behalf of the people of God. But the thing about Issachar, after research, I found out that out of all of the tribes, they were one of the fastest growing tribes, but they never reached Got, or they never got to the place of optimal performance because they lacked aggression. Most prophets that are in the church that are coming into the office of a prophet or people that are prophetic are lacking aggression because of the spirit of Saul. Oh my God. Now, if I was at church, I probably would say it got real quiet right now because of that insecure spirit. And so because of uh, the environment that Issachar and the tribe was around, they lacked aggression. There's nothing more disheartening and nothing more disappointing than to have a prophetic word or to have an unctioning from the spirit of God. And you get sit down or you get shut down and they take the lid and close it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? There's nothing more disheartening than that. And the more you subject yourself to that, the more what will begin to happen is that the desire to prophesy will begin to dwindle. Then aggravation and frustration, discouragement, discontentment, all of these spirits begin to set, settle in. See, let me share my personal testimony. I was in a place where I knew I was a prophet, where I knew that God had called me to be a prophet, but I was in a place because I was submitted. I believe in authority. I believe in accountability. But because it was not uh, acknowledged and reverenced or revered in my life, I left it alone. And then because I left it alone, praise God, that thing just began to just dwindle and dwindle and dwindle and dwindle. But at some point, God began to stir me up again and I began to step out. And then all of a sudden, I began to see the things of God begin to move. So I'm telling you, when it comes to fasting tonight, saints of God, uh, 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 when it comes to the prophetic voice, it is so important that we fast. It is so important. I'll say that again. Fast. F, it fortifies you. It accelerates the hand of God on your behalf. S, it superimposes over anything and everything, principalities and power. T, it produces long and overdue testimonies. Praise God. How many of you are looking for some testimonies and expecting God to do some miracles and great and wonders in your life? Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Or the leaders are not sensitive to the presence of the Holy Ghost. I don't understand if that's a question or not. Freezing in and out. Well, guys, I'm so sorry about the freezing in and out. Uh, but uh, when it comes to the prophetic voices, uh, we were talking about uh, a prophet. You know, there are people that are out there hearing so many different types of voices and they're out there for themselves. They're out there to build their empire and not advance the kingdom of God. My Lord, divine connection is real. John Eckhart is on the live now talking about fasting. Oh, my God. Oh, that's amazing. Unbelievable. Wait till I see him tomorrow. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's awesome. Oh, my goodness. That's powerful. Praise God. Well, you know what the Bible says? Out of the mouth of every two and three, shall that word be established. I feel the prophetic moving in, 
in life and I have the spirit of Saul, please pray for boldness. Amen. We'll definitely pray for boldness. I just release boldness upon you right now. The Bible declares that the righteous are as bold as a lion. I just declare boldness over you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Boldness, boldness, boldness in the name of Jesus. All right, guys, uh, I'm just going to give you just those two points because I want to save some time for you guys to ask some questions. And uh, uh, God bless you, God's daughter. So uh, we want to give you guys an opportunity to comment and uh, put your questions out there. Any questions on the lesson tonight? The prophetic voice is coming back like fire. Amen. Amen. That is so true. 2016, it will be a prophetic shift. Amen. God bless you, powerhouse. Amen. Any other uh, questions? Any other comments? I've been running from my whole life until this divine clarity on September the 25th. Wow. Praise God. Yes, we want to be lit on fire. Amen. 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 Well, praise God. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I really appreciate that on tonight. You are on fire, prophet. Thank you, everybody. Love. <laughs> amen. Amen. Thanks for the love, guys. Praise God. Thank you so much. Well, I just wanted to jump on here, guys, so just to share a little bit with you uh, about prophetic voices, and maybe we'll do round four, uh, praise God, a little bit later on tomorrow, uh, just to touch down with you guys. Amen. Love you guys. Just wanted to give you guys a shout out. Amen. Yes, he is. Come on, sir. Thank you, man, Antonio, for inviting followers. Yeah, you guys that are still on, you guys can go ahead and invite some others uh, to this time of sharing. Uh, any questions? Uh, any comments? Throw some questions. Let's hear some questions, guys. What are some of the things that you guys have been encountering in your prophetic walk with, with, with God? What are some of the things that you've been encountering with the prophetic office? Prophetic gift is different from a prophetic anointing. Yes. Yes. Uh, 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 those that are gifted with the prophetic more so along the lines of walking in the office of a prophet as opposed to the prophetic anointing. Uh, anybody can prophesy and you don't have to be a prophet to prophesy. But when there's a prophetic anointing to give you a perfect uh, validation and scripture of this uh, in first Samuel, when Saul, King Saul came into the midst of prophets, he began to prophesy. I'm sorry, the prophets were prophesying and he came into a company of prophets and the Bible said that he began to prophesy as well. So you don't necessarily have to be a, a prof, excuse me, a prophet to be able to prophesy. But because you're in the company of prophets, the gift of prophecy is present. So that thing will get stirred up in you. Can you talk some more about sensitivity? Sensitivity. For me, sensitivity is so important, uh, not only as a senior pastor, uh, but as a worship leader as well, uh, sensitivity is so important to have. It, it, it opens up your ear. Sensitivity is what we would call a, a knife sharpener, a knife sharpener. You know, when you have a dull knife, they have a sharpener and they tell you just, you know, sharpen the knife. You don't have to necessarily throw it away. Well, you don't have to throw your walk with God away. Praise God. But you can sharpen it. You can sharpen your sensitivity by spending time in worship, spending time in worship, coming to the UK anytime soon. I would love to come to the UK. I would be honored to come to the UK. Uh, you can inbox me on Facebook and uh, connect me with your leaders there, your uh, senior pastor. I would love to come to the UK. I've never been to the UK before, actually. Um, do I go or stay at my church? You know what? I cannot answer that question. I don't know uh, the situation uh, that is current, you know, right there where you're at. Uh, I, everybody's situation is different. So I cannot answer that uh, with a, uh, a straight answer. But I can definitely pray for you uh, that God will give you the patience and the wisdom and the guidance in this season. Absolutely. I can definitely do that. Thank you guys so much for the love. Keep the questions coming, guys. Uh, I know Apostle Eckhart is on uh, talking about fasting right now. Uh, I want to make sure I have the email, Pastor J.D. Coleman at sbcglobal.net. Yes. Not being able to pray a lot when I fast, I be very weak. Sorry, Periscope keeps dropping and freezing. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Any other questions? Any other comments, guys, on the scope on tonight? Any other comments or, or questions on scope tonight? Praise God. Amen. All right, guys. Any other comments? I uh, hope this has been blessing somebody on tonight. I hope this has blessed somebody. 
Hey, man, I know a lot of people fell off and got on uh, with Apostle Eckhart because he's talking about fasting as well. Uh, but uh, I certainly thank those of you that remain uh, faithful and stay connected with us during this time. I love you for that. Thank you so, 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 so much for that. Uh, any other closing comments uh, before we conclude on tonight? Uh, any other comments or any takeaways for the um, lesson on tonight? So we said number one. Anybody know what number one was? Thank you for praying for my boldness for me. How do you sharpen your prophetic words if you are a seer primarily? Uh, worship, I'm telling you, worship is a very great way to sharpen the prophetic. It's a great way to sharpen uh, your sensitivity to hearing. Very great info, sitting here chewing it. Amen. Uh, any other comments, guys? Anybody remember what the first point was as far as prophetic voices? Anybody remember what the first point was? Shout it out for me on the screen. What's the first point? Man of God, I know who I am and what my gift are, but I ask that you pray for me because they that so that they can recognize. Amen. We'll definitely do that woman of God. Amen. 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 The Bible declares that your gift makes room for you. Amen. God's daughter. You got it. Humility. What was number two class? Number one was humility. Amen. Wow. A new man. The Lord has revealed, I'm sorry, things about what was going on around me, persistent dreams and visions. Amen. Uh, number two, what was number two, guys? Anoint, I think someone is stopping my flow. I've been going through warfare. Amen. You know what? The life of a prophet is never easy. I'm telling you. I know from firsthand, uh, I would never uh, want to pray the office of a prophet over no one that uh, that is not ready to handle uh, the reality is, is that we're never really ready. Uh, God gives us grace uh, along the way. He gives us more along the way than when we started to begin with. Amen. Rhonda, you are a powerhouse. Well, bless you, Miss Rhonda. Thank you so much. Iceberg one. Praise God. Number two submission class. What is number three? Uh, y'all a good class. I just want to make sure y'all out there taking good notes. Number two submission. What was number three? Number three. Okay. Somebody said fortify. Uh, no, I'm learning so much. Thank you, humility. Can you email your notes? <laughs> you know what? If I email you my notes, you ever saw the movie Mission Impossible? It's going to have to self-destruct. <laughs> I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. Uh, but number one, humility. Number two, submission. Number three, sensitivity. Number four, anybody remember what number four was? Number four was a worship lifestyle. Anybody remember what number five was? Number five, number five. Glory to God. Number five, anybody remember? What materials would you recommend for prophetic worship? Well, you know what? I know um, I have a book that is out. Uh, I, it just came out. Accelerate. Somebody said accelerate. <laughs> no, accelerate. That was one of the things for the acronym for the word fast. But you, you got some notes, though. Uh, but I have a book called The Chambers of Chenaniah, uh, 12 Foundational Truths to uh, Praise and Worship. I talk about prophetic worship and I talk about worship and talk about the song of the Lord and talk about changing the sound in your ministry. If you don't like the direction that your ministry is going or that your life is going, simply change the sound. Amen. Prayer. Yes, right. God's daughter. You got it. And so uh, number five was prayer. Number six was fast, fast. And we gave you that acronym for fast. Amen. Prophets are so misunderstood. I hear you. Yes, Lord. And then we said uh, the next one after that or the last one was confession. Confession. And we didn't really get a chance to really get into that. Uh, the time is far spent. I don't want to spend another long scope with you guys like we did on the other time because I wanted to give you guys a chance to ask questions uh, as we develop this uh, premature school of prophets, you know, uh, develop this uh, this uh, teaching on the prophetic. Amen. LOL. So praise God. Uh, I want you to be so stirred up that you get to another level of hearing the voice of God. I'm not under a leadership who deals in the prophetic, but I'm very familiar. Please pray for me. Absolutely. Chick, uh, we'll pray for you. God bless you fast. Absolutely. My gifts have been accelerated over the past. Amen. Amen. Prayer. Wow, man, fasting, prayer, 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 prayer. How many of you believe in the power of fasting? How many of you know it's important to fast? Amen. 
Praise God. Well, listen, guys, thank you so much for joining. Uh, if there are not any other comments, I'm going to go ahead and jump off here. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and jump off here, guys. Uh, thank you so much uh, for come sharing with us on tonight. I read it. It's awesome. Okay. Who is that? Kenny girl or Canary girl. I read it. It's awesome. Prayer. Power. Listen, guys, I want to encourage you. Make sure you go to my website. You're welcome. Thank you, High Ticket One for One. I want you to go to my website, www.trykci, T-R-Y, uh, the letter K-C-I. I want you to go there and uh, pick up our latest book, uh, The Chambers of Chananiah. Uh, I talk about uh, prophetic worship, spontaneous worship, uh, talk about uh, the songs of the Lord. Uh, what is your Facebook page? Uh, Delan, D-E-L-A-N-D, -E John, J-O-H-N, Coleman, C-O-L-E-M-A-N. So that's Delan Coleman. You can find me on Facebook right there. Amen. So yeah, I want to encourage you guys to help us out, uh, get the word out and spread the word and advance the kingdom of God uh, as it relates to worship, uh, which is so dear to my heart as a prophet and as a pastor, a senior pastor, uh, as a worship leader as well. Blessings to you as well, Powerhouse. Uh, definitely want you guys to go ahead to our webpage and uh, make sure you go ahead and order that book and uh, help us get the word out uh, around the world uh, in Amsterdam, uh, Holland, uh, Washington, uh, Pennsylvania, wherever you guys are all logged on. Uh, we may not have the opportunity to come there, but uh, certainly we want to encourage you to pick up our book, our latest book, and just get it. And I promise you it's going to be a blessing and you won't regret it. Amen. All right, guys. Peace and blessings. I bless your people right now, Father. I pray for them right now, Lord. Those that have remained, those that are faithful, Lord, I thank you right now that you continue. I will email you what church did you attend when you were here in Houston. Okay. Um uh, New Light Christian Center, where my bishop is, uh, Bishop Ivy Hilliard. Lord, I just bless your people right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I thank you right now, Father, for the prophetic uh, anointing and those that have a desire to prophesy, Lord, that you would increase that desire, that you would place them around people that are prophetic minded, that you would place them around the true prophets, the P-R-O-P-H-E-T's, Lord, not those that are P-R-O-F-I-T for themselves, but those that are prophets for the kingdom of God. I thank you right now, God, that even for those that have spoken in terms of boldness, that you would give them boldness right now. Lord, you said the righteousness are as bold as a lion, and I bless them right now. I decree and declare over their life boldness right now, that they'll begin to prophesy, and as they open their mouth, God, that the fire of the Lord will begin to come out of their mouth in Jesus mighty name. And I thank you, Lord, for those that are in transition, those that are in ministries where they are not flowing in the prophetic. Lord, I thank you right now that the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. And as the rivers of water turn, God, you turn the weather so ever you will, that you have the ability to turn the heart of man uh, for the things and the people of God. And Father, I bless you for your people right now. I speak the blessings of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob right now in Jesus' mighty name until we connect again. Uh, blessings to all of you, my scopeites, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, Helpful UK. Amen, UK. Uh, make sure you connect with me, uh, young lady from the UK, and let me know what church you're affiliated with. Uh, we would love to come to the UK. Uh, please pray for everyone in El Paso. Amen. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Yes, great lesson. Thank you so much, God's child. Thank you so much. Amen. Well, I love you guys, and uh, the blessings of the Lord uh, be upon you. Uh, prosperity and increase as well until we connect again. So when you guys go back and replay, uh, you guys can still give us hearts uh, because we want to get over a hundred thousand hearts or so because that's going to help us uh, get to a broader audience so others can be uh, touched by uh, these lessons that we've been teaching. Uh, because how many of you believe that what we've been sharing with you the last two days or so in a couple of days that someone else needs to hear that? How many of you out there know that someone else needs to hear this? Amen. Just just throw your hands up or thumbs up. Amen. Please do. Yes, absolutely. There's some others that need to be out there that are knowing it. So you can go back and review it after this and uh, keep that heart count going and send some other hearts up because we want to get the uh, word out as much as we can. We want to get more people uh, connected to us 
uh, by way of social media and Periscope and just get the word out. Amen. Uh, that God is raising up true, authentic voices in this season because people need a word that's going to change their life and not only change their life, but bring balance back into their life. Amen. Well, praise God. I love you guys. Peace and blessings. Talk to you soon.